Hi, everyone, and thank you for the opportunity to share with you in the Knox College Chapel worship. I am particularly privileged to share with you because I'm bringing you this message from the Presbyterian Church of Trinidad and Tobago and from St. Andrew's Theological College, where I'm the principal. My name is Adrian Sunerine and I attended Knox College in the 1990s. I was privileged to graduate with a gold medal from Knox College and to be the president of the Missionary and Theological Society when I was there. My learning, my time, the enthusiasm that I experienced, the quality of education have all endured with me, and the lessons received from Knox continue to be a living legacy with me. And so I'm glad to be here in the church in Trinidad and Tobago, sharing with you in a different culture and different climate, the same doctrines, the same beliefs, the same practices that we celebrate as Presbyterians. As we think about our God, our faith, and the challenges during these times of COVID, we recognize that whoever we are and wherever we have come from, we are where we are meant to be because God calls us and shows us that we have come from many different places and we've been placed in many different places to do wonderful things in his name. So we are all today part of the Knox College family and I share with you as part of that family some reflections and thoughts. God bless you. Good afternoon. Please join me in the call to worship. In your wisdom, O oh God, you call us here to worship you. We gather alive to the word of God. You call us to be fully alive with your life abundant, ready to listen and respond with heart, soul, strength and mind. We listen alive to the word of God. You call us to be always watchful for your word of wisdom, sometimes startling and unexpected, sometimes still and quiet, but always dwelling among us. We watch and wait for the word of God. Let us pray. Eternal and merciful God, you have loved us with a love beyond our understanding. And you have set us on paths of righteousness for your name's sake. You are our light and our salvation. Yet we have strayed from your way. We have sinned against you in thought, word and deed. Through what we have done and what we have left undone. As we remember the lavish gift of your grace symbolized in baptism. O oh God. We praise you and give you thanks that you forgive us yet again. As we prepare our hearts for worship, we worship the Spirit, the Holy Fire who renews us to the one true God to whom all honour, glory and praise be given. Jesus Christ. Amen.
Psalm 133, a song of ascent. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head, running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore. Thanks be to God for the reading of Holy Scripture. This is a reading from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all, and in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
As we think about what God is saying to us today, I think about some words from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians in chapter 4, from verse 4. The Apostle Paul tells us, There is one body and one spirit, just as there is one hope to which God has called you. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. There is one God and Father of all people, who is over all, through all, and in all. Thanks be to God. Let's bow in prayer. Living and loving Lord, be with us, we pray, sharing with us the wonder of your glory, the delight of your spirit, the thrill of being in your service. Anoint us, we pray, with your gifts and graces. Equip us and energize us for whatever tasks you are calling us to. Hear our prayers as we celebrate our divine destiny in you, for you, and with you. We offer this and all our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, the only King and Head of the Church. Amen. I greet you from the wonderful sunny island of Trinidad, part of the nation of Trinidad and Tobago. I attended Knox College years ago. Many years before that, in 1868, the Presbyterian Church of Trinidad and Tobago was established by a missionary from Nova Scotia, John Morton. He came to Trinidad because he wasn't well. He had a respiratory infection, and his doctors told him that instead of the cold Canadian climate, the tropics would benefit him. John Morton did not intend to come to Trinidad, but he ended up here. And there, in Trinidad, he saw people who were oppressed and marginalized. 
who had been brought to work on the sugarcane plantations from India, receiving no education or enlightenment or evangelism, and John Morton began a mission to them. Today, our world faces the challenges of the pandemic, COVID-19. Perhaps within every challenge, there is an opportunity. Every crisis can be an accelerator for change. We think about our lives. How is God changing us? How is God changing the world to which we have been called? How is God teaching us to adapt and to be agile for new forms of ministry in the world today? John Morton began a mission. That mission gave birth to a church, the Presbyterian Church of Trinidad and Tobago. This church today, my church, has 105 congregations, 72 primary schools, five high schools, and a theological college of which I'm principal. The ministry in the Presbyterian Church of Trinidad and Tobago is very diverse, very varied, because as ministers, one day, on a Sunday, the 24 of us seeking to minister to 105 congregations, we can minister to three or four congregations, sometimes even five, on a Sunday morning. Then on Mondays, we speak to a primary school, telling them about the love of the Lord revealed in Jesus Christ, telling them about what it means to be a child in a Presbyterian primary school. Then, later on during the week, we may teach religious instruction at a secondary school. We are chaplains for our universities in this nation. And we are involved in civic and community life. Ministry here has adopted new forms based on patterns of worship that were brought from different cultures. Today, this day in which you are listening to me, it's a public holiday in Trinidad and Tobago. It's a day that's called Spiritual Baptist Shouter Liberation Day because there was a time when this group of people were persecuted. Their religion was outlawed. Today celebrates their freedom when those restrictions and regulations were lifted, and the laws were repealed. I greet you today on this liberation day to remind you that God is over all and through all and in all. Familiar words that we hear as the Apostle Paul reminds us over and over, there is one, one Lord, one hope, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all who is over, through, and in all. Familiar prepositions to those of us who have studied the Greek language. Epi, dia, and en. Over, through, and in. The sovereignty of God. God working through each of us and God within us, yet transcendent. All of these ideas encapsulated and embodied in these simple words. We think of our lives. We are diverse. Most of you listening to me, you're in Canada. I'm here in Trinidad and Tobago. Yet, there is still one God and Father of us all who is over all and through all and in all. The sovereignty of God is undiminished by our individuality or our geography. In fact, our peculiarities and particularities strengthen the unity that we are because they show the universality 
of God's domain and the joy of the harmony of the Lord's kingdom and the kinship that we know we have with one another. The Presbyterian Church of Trinidad and Tobago is a vibrant church, a missional church, an exciting church, a church where there is a lot going on because, particularly through our missions in the schools, we are in tune with the heartbeats of our communities. We feel the pulse of the nation. When we speak to our communities, when we speak to the children in our schools, we don't just speak to Presbyterians. One third of our population here in our nation is Roman Catholic. One quarter of our population is Hindu. Many are Muslim. A growing number identify themselves as unaffiliated or for religion say none. 40,000 of them still try to express themselves as Presbyterian. Not the easiest choice to make and certainly not the easiest religion to spell. Yet they choose that. They identify themselves as that. We identify ourselves as that. What does it mean for us? It will mean something very different for every single one of us. For those of you who are studying at Knox College, it will mean something for your journey. For the communities that you're going to minister to, it's going to mean something. But always remember this. God calls us all. Every difference that we have is just an outflowing, a representation, a flowering of the fullness of God. The talents that we have, the opportunities that we have, the strength that we have, all comes from the oneness of God. So today, we celebrate. We are one family. Knox College, Canada. St. Andrew's Theological College, Trinidad and Tobago. The Presbyterian Church in Canada and the Presbyterian Church of Trinidad and Tobago. The sovereignty of God, service to marginalized communities, faithfulness with the people of God, now and forever. This is who we are. That's what it means to be Presbyterian. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We bow in prayer. Loving Lord, be with us all, we pray. Be with those who are suffering. Be with those who are neglected, abused, broken, marginalized, hurt, downtrodden. Call us all, O Lord, to serve you as we serve one another. Show us, O Lord, a greater vision for the world as it can be for the world as it should be, for the world as it shall be, when the kingdom of this world is become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever. Until that day, O Lord, lead us along the paths of enlightenment, we pray, so that we would discover that in your service is perfect freedom, and in your presence is the fullness of joy. For all these blessings we pray as we celebrate the calling that we have. In your name we pray, O living Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you and God bless you.